my name is Kira and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be my career story, so apologies in advance if it's a little long. A common question that I get from you guys on my blog, on social media and via email is what my career path was, what did I study in college and what internships and courses did I do to get to the job that I'm doing now. And just for anybody who is new to my channel and doesn't know what I do, um, blogging, social media, YouTube is my full-time job. I also do a lot of presenting work. Um, I'm free so I work for myself but the basis of what I do is blogging, social media influencer, as silly as that term is, and like a digital content creator. So that's basically what I do. I really truly love what I do and I'm so so thankful for that and it really did take a very long time to get to this point to be able to blog full-time as a profession. And I think the reason why I get this question, how did you get your job, so much is because people don't really know how to get here. There isn't really a set career path for jobs like this in the industry and for somebody who wants to do blogging full-time there really isn't a path to follow and while there are so many different ways that you can move into blogging as a profession all I really know is my experience so today's video is me sharing my story from the very beginning up until where I am now so let's get started okay so to start off I'm gonna take you guys right back to 2007 which was the year that I did my leaving cert I grew up in Galway in the west of Ireland and I went to Salerno secondary school and it was a fantastic school I absolutely loved it and that's where I did my leaving cert. So as a student I was extremely hyperactive, even more hyper and energetic than I am now if you can imagine it. I did get in trouble quite a lot because I found it really hard to focus, I was always chatting, I was always up to some sort of mischief but I also did have a lot of respect for my teachers, I didn't really have a problem with authority, I just had so much energy. So obviously when you're in secondary school you're expected to start thinking about your future and what you want to do and to be quite honest back then I really did not know. I loved subjects like English, I was very creative, when it came to any kind of public speaking or debating I absolutely adored it I definitely excelled in those kind of things but I really did not know what I wanted to do for a living and I felt the pressure of having to figure that out so quickly very daunting when it came to my leaving cert I didn't really study all that much but I ended up getting a very good leaving cert I got 450 points if you know the point system in Ireland you'll kind of know where that falls it's um, quite a good number of points to get it allows you to apply to a lot of different courses and certainly there was a huge scope of courses that I could have gone for but again I didn't really know what I wanted to do so I ended up going with a little bit of a fail safe and I applied to arts at NUI Galway. So from 2008 to 2010 I was in college in Galway doing my arts degree. I also was doing a diploma in Irish at the same time and the subjects I studied were English and sociology and political studies. Now I absolutely love English, I always have but I still to this day do not know why I chose sociology and political studies because I have no interest in politics, like none. But at the same time you know parts of the course were interesting but looking back I probably could have picked something that suited me a little bit better. So while I was in college I was also working so as soon as I came out of leaving cert I looked for a job and I was lucky enough to find one in Eason's. They're an amazing bookshop. I was working in their Shop Street branch in Galway. So I worked in their educational books department which was upstairs and I absolutely loved it. I got to deal with loads of different customers and I loved the people that I worked with and obviously I was earning my own money which was great. I was supporting myself. To be honest looking back at my college years I didn't really really gel with college all that much. Maybe it was the subjects that I picked or even the course that I did but I didn't find it particularly challenging or particularly exciting and it just didn't really gel with me. Now I ended up getting you know a good result in my degree, I did fine in my exams, I ended up getting a 2-1 which was brilliant. So it was my final year in college and like I said I was feeling a little bit of a disconnect with college, I didn't feel like it was motivating me or challenging me very much and in an effort to find a new creative outlet I decided to start a blog. Now this is six years ago and at that time blogging was not the industry that it is today. There were very few bloggers and blogging itself was quite underground, it wasn't that popular and most people didn't actually really know what a blog was. Now I'm not saying that I was the first blogger in Ireland, certainly there were some amazing blogs out there already but blogging as an industry was not commercial, it was not you know something that people did for a living and definitely not as recognized as it was today. So when I started in my blog I was just looking for a creative outlet. I had absolutely no idea that it would take me to where I am now especially because at the time I was feeling a little bit lost. It was not something that I ever thought I could make money off of. It was not something that I ever thought would turn into my career and I'm really glad that when I started it genuinely started as a very organic Kind of hobby. So a couple of months into my blogging I was really really enjoying it and I decided to invest in 
the best camera I could afford which was not a very good camera at all and I used that to start taking pictures of my outfits and my accessories and I started doing personal style posts and it started to get a little bit more recognized in Galway and in Ireland as well. So by the time I graduated from my degree in 2011 I had completely fallen in love with my blog. It was still very much in the baby stages, it was still just growing but I was so passionate about it and I was so happy that I had found something that I truly loved doing. I would pour all of my spare time into it and it really just made me so happy. I still never thought that it was something that I could do as a job so I figured that maybe journalism might be right for me. I loved writing, I loved sharing things, I loved speaking to an audience and I particularly loved you know fashion and lifestyle so I figured that maybe that kind of lifestyle journalism might suit me. I was advised that a journalism masters or postgrad would be the correct route for me to follow and there were plenty of good ones to choose from in Ireland but at the time I still wasn't a hundred percent sure if journalism would be right for me so rather than investing by five, six, seven, eight thousand euro for a master's or a postgrad, I decided to enroll in a shorter, more intensive course so I could figure out in a shorter space of time if it really was something that I wanted to do. So I enrolled in a short women's writing journalism course in the London School of Journalism and it was only about two or three weeks and it wasn't too expensive. I think it was under a thousand euro and I traveled over to London and shacked up in some really bad accommodation and did the course. Now I absolutely loved the course and I learned so much from it in terms of critical thinking thinking and how to hone my writing and writing for a general audience and those are skills that I still use today but through the course we were taught about all the ins and outs of journalism as an industry. Coming towards the end of it I kind of got the feeling that maybe journalism wasn't the exact right thing for me. So in 2011 my blog was really starting to find its feet, its audience was growing, I was falling more and more in love with it every single day and I really was devoting all my spare time to it and it was at that time that another big opportunity came around and that was an ambassadorship role for Pretty Polly. So Pretty Polly are a tights company from the UK and they basically had an online search in the UK and Ireland where they were looking for um, kind of like a real girl ambassador for their brand. They wanted somebody who could write about their brand, help them with videos and just kind of create content and be like a real girl face of their product. I thought that it looked like a lot of fun so I entered and I actually ended up getting down to the top 10 and we were all invited over to London for the final casting day. Now they actually made a video Video from that final casting day so I'm going to insert it so you can see it's actually so funny but I ended up winning the ambassadorship role for me at the time it was absolutely huge I had never done any kind of media or press work at that time and then suddenly I was being interviewed for different magazines in Ireland and there was a lot of interest at the time so this was something I was not used to at all but I found the whole experience so much fun that it opened my eyes to the fact that if I worked really hard and if I put myself out there that anything could happen so one of my my roles as the ambassador for Pretty Polly was to travel over to London Fashion Week and report backstage at the House of Holland show. So I had my little camera, I actually had upgraded to a slightly better camera at this stage, it was still not great. They gave me a backstage pass on my wrist and in I trotted completely on my own and I was expected to film backstage, get some interviews and just put together a video of what was going on. Now if you've ever been to Fashion Week before you'll understand how chaotic and how busy it is. I was thrown in the deep end. I was so terrified. As soon as I walked in amidst all the chaos I completely forgot my nerves and I just had so much fun. And I still have the video that I made from it so you guys can see. It's obviously not a masterpiece. I was such a rookie at the time but I found it so exciting. I went and grabbed, you know, Pixie Geldof for an interview. She was so lovely. I interviewed Henry Holland, Alexa Chung was there, Nick Grimshaw was there. And it was also my first time properly creating video content. And I really think that that point was a real light bulb moment for me because I left thinking, this is what I wanna do for the rest of my life. How can I get to a stage where this is my job? It did dawn on me that all of my natural skills actually align really, really well with that type of work. So returning home from London Fashion Week that season, I was a changed woman and I was hell bent on pursuing this as a career. I was told that it was incredibly hard to break into the industry. I had no qualifications in broadcasting. I had no contacts in the broadcasting industry. Um, I was still supporting myself, so I really didn't have that much money, but I didn't let that deter 
for me and I was hell bent on making it work. So I started to research a lot for any kind of opportunities in Ireland, any kind of internships, any kind of work experience that might lead me down this path. Now I was still living in Galway at the time, I was still working in Eason's to support myself but I dedicated every spare minute to working on my blog, trying to build my social media profiles and trying to get as much experience as I could in the industry. So in 2012 I was approached by a Dublin PR company who were managing a campaign for Diet Coke and the campaign was basically to find regional reporters to report at various um, fashion events around the city. So I was chosen as the Galway reporter and I was so so excited. So when that project wrapped up I was still looking for more experience and it was at this stage that I realized I wanted more experience on the production side. I didn't just want to learn about what to do in front of the camera, I wanted to learn about how everything worked behind the camera. I researched some different broadcasting masters and postgrads in Ireland and there was one in Dublin in Dunleary that I was quite interested in but it was 8,000 euro. So just like when I had an interest in journalism I decided to forego doing the really expensive masters and I decided to enroll in a shorter course with the Park Studio. So the Park Studio are a TV training course that are in Dublin. They train in all aspects of broadcasting, they look at production, presenting, script writing, researching, directing, all of that kind of stuff but it was a lot less expensive than the masters. That course was amazing. In the classes we had major deadlines, we were writing, producing, researching pieces on the go and it was really brilliant hands-on experience. So even when I was doing this course in Dublin I was still living in Galway so every time I had a course day I would have to get up at five in the morning and get the bus up to Dublin, do the course and then get the bus back down to Galway and it was really tiring. So in 2013 I started an internship with Fashion One and they were a fashion channel that was based in Dublin and they basically are a crew that cover lots of different fashion events. Now when I accepted this internship I was still living in Galway so again just like before every time there was an event I would get the bus up cover the event and then get the bus down and at this point I was still working in Eason's, I was still working to support myself and I was still blogging as much as I could. So between the internship and my blog and also working as much as I could it really was quite a challenge to keep everything going but because I loved what I was doing so much I was happy to sacrifice the time and it was worth it. So coming into 2013 I knew that in order to really progress with my work and to really kind of um, make bigger steps into the industry I would have have to move to Dublin. But I knew that I would also have to pay my rent and pay my bills so I couldn't just quit my job and move up. So I applied for a transfer from Eason's in Galway up to an Eason's in Dundrum and thankfully there was a branch in, of Eason's in Dundrum that decided to take me on. So in 2013 I packed up my life and made the move to Dublin and I was so lucky because my boyfriend Yosef came with me. He had a course that he wanted to do up there as well so it was really good timing and we moved up here and moved into this house that we're still in today. It was at this point that I was starting to get invites to lots of different press events and things like that and to be able to just leave my house in Dublin and even walk to the event and then walk home and not having to get a bus for two and a half hours each way was the best feeling ever. My plan when I moved to Dublin was to look for work in the fashion industry as quickly as I could. I knew it would be really difficult to get a full-time broadcasting job. They're very thin on the ground so I thought that a full-time job in fashion would be more achievable. So after only a few months of living in Dublin I was very lucky and a really great opportunity came up. It was a position for a lead stylist of an online clothing company called iClothing. So naturally I applied for it and I was very lucky that they decided to give me the job. I had never done any kind of work like this before and I was honest about that in the interview. I told them I had never held a stylist position before but I think that it was the fact that I had my blog going for me and all the different experience that I had up until this point that kind of made them take that chance on me and it actually worked out really well because my role as lead stylist for eye clothing encompassed so many different things. So I did lots of styling for their photo shoots, their stock photo shoots. We did a little bit of trend forecast casting, did bits of buying. I also did lots of social media with them, um, you know, writing features for their website and there was lots of different things. It was the kind of job where you roll up your sleeves and you're doing a little bit of everything and it was the best experience I could have gotten at the time. It really taught me about learning what the customer wants and it taught me about fashion on a really commercial level. So you're really learning about what the customer wants, what the customer needs. Those are skills that I still apply to my work to this day. It was such a valuable time 
time and even though I did only stay there for a year it was really the best experience I could have gotten in terms of commercial fashion. So while I was working full-time for iClothing I was still blogging just as much as always so I would clock out of my full-time job and I would come home and I would clock into my other job so every single evening every single weekend every spare moment I had was spent blogging doing social media building my profiles and just working as hard as I could and again this year was a very busy year I was stretched quite thin I had to make a lot of sacrifices but I'm so happy that I was able to keep both of them going now although I absolutely loved what I was doing in iClothing at the time I wasn't doing any kind of video content and I wasn't doing any presenting with them and I I knew that that was something that I was going to really start to miss and it was at this time that another opportunity came up that I just couldn't say no to and this opportunity was a paid presenting job with an online channel called Shamazing TV so it was a channel for a women's website and they wanted someone to create fashion content for them. So I ended up getting the job so in this role you were expected to be really really self-sufficient so I was coming up with the ideas for the pieces myself writing the scripts, filming myself, which was a new challenge, editing the pieces, which was also a new challenge, putting the packages together and then putting them out on the website. Even though it was such hard work, a real learning curve, the experience was amazing. I worked with a really, really great team and I learned so, so much in such a short space of time. At this point, I was working in iClothing and working in Shamazing and then also working on my blog as well. And I think this was kind of my breaking point. I had absolutely no free time. I was so tired all the time. I knew Knew that I wanted to take the leap eventually and work for myself but I just didn't want to rush that move because I had to make sure that I had as much experience as possible and also that I had as much saved as possible because when you move out into freelance you're in charge of your own paycheck so finally after much thought much deliberation and a lot of saving in 2015 I decided to go out on my own so the thought of working for myself was extremely scary and I took the leap and I have never looked back since. So I set up my own company to deal with kind of all the work that I was doing and make everything official. I signed up with an accountancy firm. When it came to setting up as a business on my own, it was very daunting. I didn't really have that many people to look to for advice. I did as much research as I could and uh, I just kind of figured everything out as I went along. Now it is 2016 and it is coming to the end of my second full year working for myself. Since I took the leap in 2015, uh, thankfully it's getting busier all the time. So one of the big changes has been in me signing with an agency. For the past six years of blogging, I have done everything on my own. So when it came to jobs and bookings um, and contracts, it was basically just me negotiating everything myself. I'm really glad that I did it on my own for so long because it taught me how to say no, it taught me how to value myself, it taught me how to fight my corner. Now at times it was very overwhelming and oftentimes quite lonely. I'd be faced with a decision and you don't really have anybody to ask about it. And I'm sure a lot of people who work for themselves probably um, relate to that. It's, it's kind of a strange feeling and there's that that pressure that if you make the wrong decision you know you're gonna suffer for it but it does also teach you to hone in your gut and to really trust your intuition and to trust your judgment when it comes to these decisions so coming into 2016 I had a full year of working for myself behind me and I had learned so much in that point you can prep to take the leap for as long as you want but it's only really after you take the plunge that you start to learn things really really quickly so coming into 2016 I had a little bit more of an idea of where I was going one the things that I felt like I needed to really scale up was some sort of management behind me. You can often spend so much time working on pitches and dealing with brands and doing all of that back and forth and the project itself may never actually materialize. So I realized that while I was still working steadily I was spending a lot of time on the back and forth and I knew that if I started to work with some sort of management or some sort of agency that that would take that out of the equation. And lo and behold I got a call from one of Ireland's biggest model agencies and they had just started a new division of influencers and they asked me to be part of it. So at the beginning I will admit I was a little bit worried because it's always kind of scary when you let somebody into this thing that you've created but I have never looked back. It's been one of the best decisions that I made and it's really helped me kind of grow you know as a content creator and the bottom line is that it allows me more time to focus on creating videos, creating blog posts and creating the content that you guys like so much which for me is the most important part about what I do. So that brings us up to the present day. Now we are creeping into the 
end of 2016 and I really couldn't be happier. But probably the most important part of this career journey is that I still very much see myself as a work in progress. This video is not meant to say that I have everything figured out or that I'm at a point where I feel like I've, I'm the best that I can be because that's not the case at all. I'm still learning all the time. When I look at, you know, my career path, it's really fun to, you know, reminisce and look how far I've come. And if you think about it, it's actually a really short space of time. So if you are watching this video and you have something that you aspire to do, if you have something you're really passionate about and you're not too sure if you could do it for a living, you know, just remember that you can accomplish so much in a relatively short space of time. So if you just keep focused on your goals and if you believe in yourself, as cheesy as it sounds, you know, you can achieve those things. I get questions from people about what college course to do, what did I study and, you know, which courses or internships did I do to end up here. But you don't have to necessarily do a college course or a degree or a master's in the area that you want to work in. Yes, it absolutely helps. There's no doubt about that. But, you know, real on the ground experience is also really important. So I'm going to wrap up this video because I'm worried that it's going to be the longest video in the history of YouTube. If you liked this video, feel free to give it a thumbs up. And if you have not already, then please do subscribe to my channel. That helps me out so much. I will leave the link in the description below. And that is all for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on my next one. Bye!